I have been a Buddhist all my life, at least one life, this one. <laughs> all right. I hope I can continue to be a Buddhist for many, many more life. But today, the environment, the condition are so much different from what it was 2,500 years ago. Many, many people in the ancient time, they have um, excess time, you know, of which they can have the luxury of sitting down and meditate, cultivate their mental perfection, and they seek to find the peace within themselves. All right. As all of us should already know, sometime, even if when we have money, but if you've got nothing to do, that leads to some sort of mental suffering. All right. So, actually, when I asked the um, approach BF earlier to ask the mission that the topic of conversation today to be nurturing a Buddhist faith, of which actually I have um, a very moderate ambition to explain with my limited knowledge about how a person can keep our own faith, our own belief in the Buddhism. Then I was requested that perhaps I could change my title a little bit to become to nurture the Buddhist faith of which actually I thought that was um, very big for me. It means uh, For me, it means the Buddhist faith means the Buddhism religion in the big society. There is no way I can explain everything. The word Buddhism itself are so big. You know, it encompasses the teaching, the order of Sangha, the followers, the monument, the history, and everything. So, I think I will go through it slowly, all right, share an experience. I am, I am in no position to teach Dharma. I am not educated enough for that. But as uh, BF officials have pointed out, Vera, you come from Thailand, there's so many Buddhist teaching there, whatever things there, what you speak seem to make sense, please share. I was like, oh my. And in Thailand, especially there's a saying, because um, I must say that Thailand is a place of um, a lot of personality. All right. As those who have been in Thailand should already know. All right. Sometimes you have temple next to the red light district, the Pat Pong. They were asking me, Vera, how do you survive as a Buddhist? Aren't you tempted to go to karaoke? You know, it's so cheap. We will, oh. Let me say this personal capacity first, all right? Just because the temptation is there, it doesn't mean we have to do it. All right, and I have to say this. Please forgive me. Many, many other countries are different world from what you have here in Singapore. All right, because Singapore has a very well organized governance. You have a very high level of morality. In Thailand, that is a place where petty issues become public. Everybody wants to be heard. And, you know, because Thailand population for the past 30 years expands so much. From the time when I was in Thailand, and we have a population of 18 million today. I think it's about 75. Over the span of 30 years, it expanded so fast. So, back to the topic of um, what I am going to have a discuss with uh, all the friends here today is uh, nurturing 
the Buddhist faith. So, I have been a Buddhist for a long time, but I must admit it hasn't been easy. All right, all of us have our own expectation, and with this world, there's so many factors changing all the times. You know, the um, politics, greed, ego, and all things. So, how do we survive as a Buddhist, especially in Singapore? Most of us are trying very hard to balance a life of three equal parts of your work, your joy, and your devotion to your faith. All right. A lot of uh, younger Singaporeans ask, well, if you're Buddhist, why do you have so much money? Why don't you donate it all to the poor people? Some of my friends, when they go to Thailand, ask me, Vera, the king is so rich. Why don't the king of Thailand donate all the money to the people so that the whole country should have no prostitutes? I'm sorry, sometimes I brought this word up. Actually, Thailand is famous, or oh, no, 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 rather very shamefully notorious for it. It's not what we are proud of. And trust me, it's not what we are wanted. Those were like my sisters. Those were like my compatriots. Trust me, nobody wants to see the people you are close to in that position. But maybe it's difficult for you guys to understand here why they have to work in that manner. Alright. When you don't have enough to feed yourself, your family, when you don't have enough to feed the basics like education, like the um, clothing, or even medicine, you know, sometimes they are forced to do it. It's social circumstances. Alright. So... I myself have a um, crisis with Buddhist faith when I was seven years old, very, very young. I wanted uh, to pass exam. I thought Buddha must be so kind and compassionate. I was told. My father says so. So I prayed so hard. Yet, I wasn't first in class because even my father said, you know, if you're first in class, I'm going to buy you toys. So I was like, oh, maybe, you know, Buddha... Not, not, not so young. Okay, so then my faith changed later on when I took my A level. I want to pass my Chinese. I want to pass my exam. So in Thailand, I'm not sure whether you heard of this. It's called the Four Faced Brahma. Some of us call it the Four Faced Buddha. Actually, he's a full-faced Brahma. Brahma is an almighty Hindu god, the creator of the world. All right. He is so almighty that he has uh, four faces of which he can see north, south, east, west, and everything. He knows you know, uh, everything that's happening in the world. And Brahma started be- even before Buddha. So I thought maybe if I beg Brahma, Maybe he might be kind to me too. So I went to the Erawan temple. No, no, not a temple, a shrine. So I was trying to find a way to pray so that I can have the most effective result for whatever I was offering him. The offering that was, I was advised to be the most effective is that if you want to get what you want, you offer to the Brahma God that um, you dance around the shrine naked three times. So the more time you go around, the, the, the more link the result is. So I go there, I was saying, okay, three round, huh? <laughs> three round. Then I was reading all the sign, you know, that was placed around the shrine to find out the most information you could, you know. I was studying in Singapore, and Singapore was, you know, telling 
well, all of us here has got O-level, A-level. We go through a syllabus. We know exactly we must ask the proper question to get the right answer. So, I saw that little sign. Oh, that day I went uh, at noon time because we had, you know, I was still pretty young, 16, 17, you know. My parents refused to let me off too, uh, too late. So, the sign read, Brahma God will accept offering in the evening. And on the observant days, which is on the full moon, and the 15th, he is off to pay homage to Buddha. I said, what? <laughs> Brahma, I thought you were the greatest. Then so, so I went to ask the ladies who was at the attendance of the, the shrine. He said, oh, actually nowadays, Brahma also convert to Buddhism. He's a Buddhist. So on the observant days, he will go to heaven to see Buddha and beg for, you know, you know to listen to the Buddha's Dhamma. All right. So I was saying, my goodness, so I thought I have already got the greatest God in the world. So you're not. Fine. Then I went off anyway. Anyway, I think I got B3 for my Chinese. My whole class was clapped because I was clapping. The girl was crying because I couldn't speak even with proper Chinese. Yet I passed. So, but instead of uh, dancing naked around the, um, the shrine, I give him offering of three kind of fruit instead. I said, since, you know, you're not the greatest, and maybe, you know, I didn't get A1, a B3, okay, maybe you bark it a bit. Lah. We, we, we give you, I give you three fruits. Actually, that was the advice of my mother. My mother said, okay, you don't cheat, okay? But you, if you don't want to dance naked, you give something in return. So, fine. At least that settled my debts and Buddhist faith crisis for a while. Because in Thailand, no matter what you run to, I'm still running back to the Buddhism. Then, but how do I, you know, keep the faith around? Because when I was uh, in Thailand, I was in the Catholic school, right, St. Gabriel's College. And I was a choir boy, and in fact, I was. <laughs> they asked me to be altar boy also. I am. Um, and to think back, strangely, my parents do not object to it. All right. My parents just, my father, just put a necklace like that. Something like that, you know. You can see, uh, um, they what they call Buddha amulet. So, more or less, every little children in Thailand will have a Buddha amulet. Because, um, probably, he himself decided he couldn't, couldn't stop me. I'm going to have my fun. I was dreaming about, you know, enjoying all the Christian festivities. The um, White Christmas is so nice and romantic, you know, and if you go to the party, you get caught on the mistletoe, you get to kiss the girl. <laughs> Most important. Anyway, I was in an all-boys school, so, you know, Christmas party, you get to see the girls from the all-girls school, St. Francis Xavier. When they come, I was ready. I say. They say hello. Oh, 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 hello. <laughs> so I don't even dare to show her hand. So okay, that's destroy all my expectation for Christmas. So, but then I went on to enjoy the feast, the eating, and whatever things. Anyway, so in Thailand, then that's why I realized much later that they are pretty much accommodating. All right, and I didn't even know there were so many types of Buddhism available. I thought, hey, aren't we all under one? I thought Buddhist, uh, Buddhist, I thought Buddha was one of the God. So I thought, aren't we under you know the same supreme God? So my f- my family actually we uh, we are the one of the founder. We helped to set up one. Mahayana Buddhist temple. My father himself 
was ordained in the Mahayana temple, which is actually Vajrayan. Then my own inspiration to be a Buddhist very strong actually came after I watched the movie Sao Ling Si. I want to practice the martial art kung fu. Very important. Then, furthermore, I was told that if I meditate hard enough, you close your eye and concentrate superpower, you can fly. You can read minds. Isn't it wonderful? Of course, when I grow older and we study more, we just learn that this are the wrong delusion we have. Most of us create God, create our supreme, you know, yearning to be with a um, divine being as what we see fit. If the God can make us rich, we will be good to the God. If the God can make us, you know, uh, uh, fulfill our wish in any way, that is our God. Alright. So, but, is that what the Buddhism teach? So, there was this question in me for very long because actually I started meditation pretty early. Because um, even though we're in Catholic school, there was a teacher in the school who was actually a Buddhist and he defiantly sit down and conduct meditation class in, in Buddhist tradition. So, a few of us Four or five of us actually to always sit down and meditate together. All right? We even follow our teacher to his master. And a couple of my friends were pretty good meditators. We were only about maybe 11, 12 years old. Let me, let me pre-qualify this first, all right? There are 40 types of meditation. And each specializes in different way and things. And... Some are called kasinang. You focus on objects. Some are mixture of some. And depending on the master, they will teach you ways to focus uh, much faster. So my friend, after a few sessions, the grandmaster asked him to come up to the front. Ask him, what do you see? You, wow, ball of fire. Wow, it's going to the side. It's going to the side. He's seeing magic. <laughs> and I'm not... So, the, moment the master asked for more, you know, you know, what do you see yourself doing in your past life? So, um, he was old. There was a guy, you know, a horse running. We were all so consumed by all this magical superstition talk. I was sitting in the back of the class, in the, 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 the room. The master asked, who else? want to try magic. I stand up, me, <laughs> you know. He said, do you have a, do you carry your school bag? Do you have a pen knife inside? I said, I don't have a pen knife. I have a cutter, paper cutter. So, he said, bring the cutter along. So, when I raised my hand and volunteered my service, when he asked for volunteers, I thought he was just joking. I didn't expect him to select me. But when I walked in front of the room with a cutter knife, my face turned white. Okay. He took my hand, put the blade onto my forearm, and pulled the blade across. Nothing happened. I was like, got to faint. <laughs> turned white. The second round, he put it again. Then I realized... This was real. This is not to be tried at home, children. Okay, you will die. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Alright, so, later on, of course, I realized that with the power of concentration, these are natural. No place in the Buddha teaching did he ever deny that supernatural power do not exist. It is recognized and it is acknowledged. But he say 
it is a useless quality in attaining nirvana. All right, some show it, you know, to get more donation. Of course, you know, after I, my hand was survived, whatever money I have in the pocket, I throw it inside the day and then donate all my money. All right, okay, so normally that's how it happens. And later on, I made a trip to, uh, when I, as a doubt, I made a trip to India. I realized that, my goodness, there are even more trick there. Even more fun. They walk around, around in water. They do all kinds of things. They even strip naked and, you know, um, punch nails through the body. Well, they have that mental concentration to do it. But it is, as what Buddha say, not the right way. All right. You don't need to attain that kind of power to reach enlightenment. All right. So, if Buddhism is not about meditating and getting superpower, what is it anyway? All right. Buddhism, I believe, teaches us to choose the path of knowledge. Let's not talk about the word wisdom yet. That is one thing that we strive to cultivate, to attain. At any one time, people in this room will have different needs and different understanding. Not because he is smarter, not because somebody is less brain or whatever. Look at the boy over there. When I'm talking, he's just... Catch the ball. But some of us are you know, listening so intently. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, I'm trying to please everybody, but you know, I know I can't. So, I'm... I'm as, as best as I could. No, 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 don't stop him. You can go to sleep. It's okay. <laughs> Alright, so, Buddha taught us the path of knowledge. And I think, first thing, to nurture the faith of a Buddhism, Buddhism in us, first thing, the very first thing, we have to choose the path of knowledge first. Alright? then find out exactly what the teaching is all about, what are the different level of understanding. Slowly, all right, as we go to this, and maybe I, I'll try to share as much experience as I could. Okay, despite you know, what the uh, brothers here have said about my impressive resume, actually they're not that impressive. <laughs> okay. The reason I was so active in sport because my son cannot walk. He has cerebral palsy. All right. I love him very much. And he's a joy of my life. I'm so lucky to have him. And, but I have a sign to myself that I will have to carry him for the rest of my life. I only wish to live maybe a day longer than he is, to make sure that he is taken care of. You know, in fact, in, I think in this life, I have done most of the things I wanted. The last thing that I haven't done is to go to the moon. Maybe I could, not with my naked eye or naked body, no, 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 actual body, or a fresh body. But, okay, okay. That comes back to the how we fit into our life three equal parts of um, work, joy, and a devotion to our faith. All right. Work is important. All right. You need to have work because it gives you the means to sustain your livelihood, to give you the sustain the livelihood of the person beside you, around you. It is important. And nowhere, again, nowhere in Buddha's teaching say that you should be poor. That this poverty is the desired quality. All right. In fact, if you read, if you have read the the, the Trapadaka in details, it even says, you know, it's good to keep wealth, 
but but it is wrong to use it incorrectly. Okay. When you have money, if you use it at least to feed yourself reasonably well, to feed your wife reasonably well, to feed your mother, your father, to your kids well, then they can practice proper way of living. They can proper can practice proper way of Dharma. All right. Of course, it is wrong to cling on to wealth. It is wrong to use your money to bully others. All right. Some people, you know, stretch the credit to the limit. They say the poor brag rich, the stupid brag smart, and the coward brag courage. So, for us, very important. Whatever we do, we seek the path of knowledge and be mindful of whatever we do. Perfection for most of us here, I believe, as a Singaporean training goes, you guys are so such a perfectionist. It is something you constantly look and hope that we'll find someday all right, the peace within us. But while you strive to seek the perfect purification, never pile all your stress, all the suffering, all the misery on your shoulder. Never pile all the misery on your shoulder. Never deny the happiness that you deserve. The deserved happiness comes from the right livelihood where you're making your living lawfully, correctly, without benefiting, without, you know, taking advantage of other people. All right. And then, even though you have this happiness, you don't cling on so very tightly to this too much, not excessive. And you always seek and find constant education to improve yourself for the happiness which is finer. Alright, so... So how do we find, get on the path of knowledge and find the purification for ourselves? In the Buddha's teaching, clearly he stated two things. Sometimes I will state the words in Pali, all right? Because I memorize it in Pali. If I try to translate, sometimes you get, get off first. I will translate it back in, 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 in English, all right? There are two things which is the prerequisition uh, pre before you start studying the path of knowledge. Number one is called Porto Kosa, the sound from the other source. You listen to others first. You find a good teacher. All right. You find the sources of knowledge. Number two, Yoni So Namasikan, the way of inquiry. You critically reflect and constantly, you know, question the knowledge that you have, have, have got. Compare it with your experience. If the reason that you have attained matches with your experience, yeah, then you proceed on to the next you know, level of teaching. Alright. So, first thing, two things. Alright. You find the source of knowledge from others first because refer to my own experience, I was starting as a delusional stupid boy, begging everything to be given to me from the God. That was wrong. Okay, so, when my dad tell me, why don't you go to the temple and ask the monk? It started off as the, the monk, all right. And even though you started off in a temple, I, um, maybe I sidetracked for a while, all right. I was a monk for a short while, so even though my teacher, the head teacher, was one person, I have five other teachers. 
And in fact, it is the Buddhist tradition that we always seek and find view from many, many teachers. All right. Perhaps because the Buddhists know that the whole content of Trapitaka is so huge. And perhaps he knows human capacity too. Monk, they are human like us. With full emotion, with full feeling, but they have devoted choose. They choose to devote themselves to study the Dhamma and help teach others to understand them too. So, they are on their path to reach their own perfection too. So, when we go to them and see that they help us, you know, to enlighten us in the things that, you know, we seek to find and understand, we must know too that, you know, they, all, they too have limitations. For monks themselves, those that are ordained from five years and below, all of these are considered new monk, nawaka. But I would like to say novice, because those you know, in Thailand, please uh, have this clearly in mind. There are two things. Thailand has got tradition that every man go to the ordination in the, in the temple. Some go for you know, the one day, five days, seven days, three months, one year, whatever. But I think as long as they're below five years, they're all called new monk. All right. When they are from five to ten years, these are called those with the medium length. All right. It is a practice very common in the Buddhist the ordination that after the first five years, the Theravadian will ask their disciple, no matter how comfortable they are in the temple, to leave and seek knowledge from other teachers too. All right. So when you see monk wandering around, you know, please don't say that they are untidy, they're messy, they're whatever. They are too on their path to find the purifications. All right. And monks who have been ordained from ten to twenty years are called Tera. The word Theravada, all right, Tera is the elders. You are considered the elders already. And those who have ordained as long as um, more than 20 years, they are called Maha Thera. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not even halfway done. and It's almost 12. Actually, I plan to speak for 30, 30 minutes. Okay, so sorry, I, I might rush a bit. Huh? All right, so. So, as we seek to find knowledge from the monks, we will know that... Um, Every monk, they have the area of speciality. In Thailand, I'm not sure whether some of us have heard of Dhammagaya. Dhammagaya is actually one of the way of uh, meditation. All right. Um, it's now split into two schools, and it teaches solely on meditation. You go into the temple, they don't teach much about the, the Dharma Sutra or whatever, but they will teach you on meditation. Focus on crystal ball, see the Nimitta quickly, and they, they lead you along. Very fast, very quick. They even perform miracle right in the open. And that's when they got into trouble. Alright? The It was televised, <laughs> and then the authority clamped on it. The abbot was put under disciplinary act by the Mahatera, uh, the, 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 the Sangha authority in Thailand. A lot of um, followers were broken hearted. Suddenly, you know, you know um, the miracles got the uh, was wrong. But the explanation, explanation was clear. All this supernormal ability is not abnormal. And is this totally, completely useless for your path of knowledge to purifications. Alright? So, the Sangha among themselves conduct 
a very close door, very quiet, you know, uh, uh, disciplinary act. And after 10 years, the abbot is back to practice again, this time properly. No more television of the, the um, miracle. My God, is this real? I was there. He said, look behind the Buddha, and that's it, the halo in the skies. But what does a halo do? It doesn't give you money. It only takes money from your pocket, out of your pocket. So don't get so attached to miracle. All right. And normally, miracle in the presence of those with pure dharma, many times they fail. All right. In Singapore, you are, I think we are more used to the tangi. I'm not sure whether people have seen tangi before. All right. So, Taoism is not wrong. All right, that is the way to protect nations. But some use their abilities, you know, to express like my friends. You know, he got uh, some whatever Guan Gong spirit inside him and start fighting people, whatever. That is wrong. All right, that is wrong. So, if you are generation wise, maybe it might get to you better that uh, Spider Man was given a lesson that great, resp- uh, great power comes with great responsibility. All right. So, you need to exercise responsibility too. All right. So, as we continue our path toward knowledge, where do we find our knowledge? When I was in the temple, I was in the temple for a short five months, but I was having the, the, the temple was very kind to me because my Thai also half past six. I've been here since 1979, uh, 14 years old. So, so, you know, my Thai wasn't that good. Then there was another monk, which is from America. So both of us were given lesson in English. All right. And, I, one of the teachers that I have was an American who has been ordained as a, as a Sera. Right, he come from Wat Papong. His Thai was even better than me. And he was teaching me Thai and Pali and everything. And, you know, that was uh, embarrassing. So, back to the, um, my pursuit for knowledge. Because I ordained as an adult, I want to ordain when I was young, but my, 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 actually my parents refused. <laughs> because my brother ordained first, and he almost didn't want to disrobe. So when my turn comes, they, they just you know, turned into the blind ears. So when I wanted to ordain, I was already married with kids. My mom just said, you ask your wife. <laughs> My wife was a Singaporean. I'm not sure that she's here. Oh, okay. And since she's not here, I can tell you everything. Okay. <laughs> she said, not too long, huh? <laughs> I was targeting three months. She said, not too long. Okay. My, 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 my. Okay. Then, actually, it was too short. But she was, she's already coming. You know, don't dare to look at me. Sitting in front. I was, I was sitting there in front of the, you know, all the sangha. Okay. Let's go. All right. Okay, that's okay. That, 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 that's the, um, beside the point. In fact, I wouldn't go anywhere if, if the other realm, the other life, whatever really exists, if she's not there, I wouldn't want to go. Alright, so, unless she understood the Dharma along with me and we go together, otherwise, to me, that was, otherwise, it's useless. I'm selfish. <laughs> I don't think about such a big picture. I think about myself first. Okay, so purification is useless if I can't go with my wife. All right. So back again, that time to the my pursuit of knowledge, because I was ordained as adult, I got so many questions. How do I be a good Buddhist when I'm practicing politics, business? I was a hard-nosed businessman. And, you know, how do we keep on our faith when, you know, in Thailand there are 200,000 monks, 26,000 temples, and 250,000 prostitutes. 
So I was, I, I was confused. Every topic is all messed up in my mind. I went to the master and to the teacher. Teacher, I'm lost. Save me. What do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? My teacher, the younger teacher, I catch no ball too. <laughs> the, he will always say, let's have an interview with Buddha. Some of you may remember, before Buddha passed away, he say, Ananda, the discipline, the doctrine that I have set forth and laid down for you all. This shall be your teacher after I'm gone. So, we always go to find the scripture, the Tripitaka. We will always look for the actual, you know, relevant section. Of course, I do not know where to find. The whole thing was 84,000 texts. 24 million 300,000 alf- uh, alphabets and 22,000 pages in Thai text. There's no way I should know. All right, so that's why the things about having external source, external helpers comes in. When you study Buddhism, it is important to have um, friends who help. They call good friend, Kalayana Mitra, seven qualities. I want to decide it now. <laughs> All right. Then the Tripitaka, a lot of people thought, is such a sacred scriptures. It is so chim. It is so difficult. You know, it's so untouchable. Before you touch it, you have to bow down, whatever. But actually, I have realized that the books are so friendly. Inside the Tripitaka, it has everything of which our little brothers and sisters kindergarten can open up and understand is called Chadok. The stories of the you know Buddhas and uh, his disciple. It described in beautiful children language and for those who seeks a very intense concentrated yogi or meditation practice, you know the Visutimak, the path of purification in the Apitama, deal with total textual content only. So practically, in one book, you have from kindergarten to PhD. You will choose the one that suits you best. Alright. Don't be afraid of it. And now, there are translations in English. Some of the best books are so poetic, beautiful. Ananda will say, And thus I have heard. The blessed one was walking in the field, and you know, and so and so. The whole stories come alive. And if you read it through the night, next thing you know, it's six o'clock in the morning. You know, Four o'clock, the bell ring, dong, dong, we are supposed to go in morning chant already. So, I suggest that while we are busy uh, doing our work and finding joy in life, we put some time to study the Buddhist teaching too. Joy, be it your family, your hobby, your you know, sports or whatever, all of us strive to find the perfection. Singapore, we always want to be number one. Right? So, um, trust me, there's nothing, nothing wrong is uh, about, you know, going out to work hard and seek to strive for money. Alright? As you go out to find your 5C, when you want your cash, don't just make sure you don't overspend. When you get your credit card, don't just make sure you don't get bankrupt. When you get your car, make sure you can afford 
to pay the mortgage, when you go to condo, make sure it's within your means. And country club, most of now they lose money. Don't go for it. <laughs> so most of us lose a lot of money there. So, <clears throat> in pursuit of the material, be moderate. But when you pursue the knowledge of Dhamma, give it all you have. All right. You start with a commitment in your heart that you shall go to the path of the enlightened one. Right? You start with a compassion for all your fellow human beings, all right? for your fellow colleagues, your fellow friends. Then, in your mind, get ready. All right? Be content with life of constant and lifelong learning. We won't stop learning until the day we die. All right? Contemplate correctly what is kusala, what is akuson, what is right, what is wrong. All right? Contemplate correctly what is the characteristic of life that this of life doesn't last forever. That for whatever we are, we are always under a pressure force of external factor. Alright? And then, for everything that we have built up, the condo, the cash, or whatever, all these are only transition. They are not self this is the three characteristics of life. Anichang Tukang Anatta. Please read in details afterwards. I can't, I, 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 I'm going to rush a lot. <laughs> All right. So, and then. Where was I? <laughs> so. Thank you. So. Um, with your mind thinking, and then you calmly. I repeat, right? In your heart, you start with um, commitment and compassion. Then you set your brain thinking with your contentment, with your contemplation, and you calmly, all right, select the proper way and proper dharma, proper teaching to apply to the actual life. All right. So, is everybody sleepy already? Am I going too too long? <laughs> you can continue. <laughs> May I have your permission to continue? Oh, okay, okay. I, I won't take long. I'll take ten more minutes. All right. Okay. In fact, I have a. Oh, I can last about two more hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'll, I'll take ten more minutes. All right. Actually, I wanted to talk about the Pali Canon, but I don't think today we have time. Maybe you know, maybe um, maybe uh, next five to six years later when we come back, this is from Thailand again. So from Thailand again. In fact, one more thing that I have to say that you know, to keep the faith within us, we practice the teaching of Buddha. The teaching of Buddha are categorized into three categories. I will put it in terms that uh, we understand easily. The theory, the practical, the application. All right. Pariyat is the textual contact of all Buddha teaching. You need to study the actual sutra. You need to study and read what Buddha say in able to contemplate. All right. But the practical part, you need to use it, you know. It's like the triple four training, three four training, sila, samadhi, and panya. The you practice, uh, you, you, you practice your precepts, you practice your mental cultivation by meditation, and you reflect it critically. Very important. After maybe first 15 minutes 
of full concentration and meditation, sometime, please bring up your text and start learning about it. All right. Meditation, one of benefit of it is to get your mind ready to study. All right. And if you want to get into serious meditation, again, go to the Trapitaka. Details of all the eight levels of jhana, four rupa jhana, four arupa jhana, and all the stream entering, every description is poetically written there in details. But just because you read it, it doesn't mean you're there. <laughs> okay. So, after you study the theory part of it, pariyat, you practice it, patipat, you realize it, patipat, bring it to use in your real life. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Be mindful about it. Some of my friends who are scientists actually realized Dhamma and Kodnimita while he was reading quantum physics. Some has got a chill of Nimita when they are taking photograph. Some were just playing golf. And believe me, lots and lots of Buddhist fellowships member are very, very knowledgeable and much, much into deep meditation. Oh no, no, into deep teaching than me. Alright, I have conversed with them. They are very nice, very humble, very knowledgeable, and willing to share. But just most of them, perhaps, hiding among you guys. So, to get to know them better, please attend the twenty-first anniversary dinner. Have you guys buy your tickets? <laughs> Please support Buddhist fellowship activities. Come around. In fact, some of the Buddhists believe that, you know, when you are Buddhist, you must deny the world. You must live in seclusion. You must get yourself totally cut off. Not true. Not entirely true. Buddhism is a religion of which is very social based. Alright. There are four assembly. The Sangha of Piku, Pikuni, and the Ubosot and Ubasika, the male and female ladies. Alright. All the four assembly shall comprise the Buddhism. So even among the monks, the most Secluded forest loving, they still have to come to the community, to the for the village, to get their daily elm, the food. So it, it is not the teaching at all to live in seclusion and throw away all the belonging of life. That is, you know, some other cult, you know. In fact, during Buddha's time, there are six of this. One of it, if you can, you can see it still today in Jainism. All right, the priest will be totally naked, nothing at all. All right, and then they don't even kill. Ins they don't even want to kill insect or germs. They put the um, nose mask so that insect don't accidentally fall into the mouth. That is not what Buddhas teach. Ascetic are many. They look younger. They look good, but they are not the real thing. Alright, so among before I uh, before I end, alright. Among all the fashionable practice now, because we live in the um, a globalized world now and everywhere in the world we are so heavily influenced by Western media. But we must realize that we Chinese, we the Eastern people, and the uh, Caucasian have a different history. They have justified their own belief. We have got our different belief to justify too. All right. In Europe, they have the war of religion, they have reformation, 
they have dark ages, people have been killing each other in the name of religion. You know, the witch hunt. When I was young, they call the historical period, that period they call the dark age. About three, four hundred years, they just go around killing women. Alright? And those that put under the requisition court, if you don't cry, you're a witch, you're, you're killed straight away. Right? So, they have different history from us. In Asia here, we have our practice. We also have to categorize it correctly and accurately. What is tradition? What is authentic? And what is original? All, right. All the words that you will see and read in Tropodaka, those give me ten more minutes, okay? I really finish. Those words that were written down in Tropodaka are actually the words of Buddha himself. All right. The teaching of Buddha was compiled while he was alive. It happens that one day, Venerable Chanda, who is the um, iron smith uh, in, in layman's, but when he entered the order, he became the, the person in charge of bringing food to the Buddha. He came to the Buddha, he said, My Lord, Jainism, after the founder died, their disciples disperse and they don't even know what the the prophet the the, the, the head of the religion teach anymore. So Buddha said perhaps we should rehearse what we have learned so far. On hearing that the chief disciple, the right disciple, Sariputta, the chief of wisdom, actually there and then say, then one of us shall expound, say it out, the Dharma that you teach, then two others will answer in unison, and then if it is agreed upon, Buddha shall voice his approval. So, the Buddha teaching, even though some may not sound like our words of a, you know, uh, spoken words is actually endorsed by Buddha while he was alive. The tradition of Buddhism and Christianity are different. Whenever the Buddhist teaching is compiled, it's called rehearsal. Rehearsal because everybody swear with their own life not to take off anything and not to add anything new. Whereas in other religion, I'm sorry, I mean in Christianity, when they have counsel, they will formulate, they will select, and they will choose you know, policy to be implemented and put it inside you know, the, the council. So, while some people say that Buddhist text has undergone through council. No. Actually, the Buddhism, we, in, we call it rehearsal. Rehearsal happened because when Buddha died, all right, um, Mahakasapa. Mahakasapa is the left, the disciple of Buddha. He is the father of the Sangha. He is the most handsome disciple of all Buddha's disciples. A lot of people thought, you know, he was Buddha. So, he went to the forest to stay. So the people won't get mistaken him from that. Another legend comes out, you know, they call Mahasanga Jai. Or wish, you know, wish himself to be a fat Buddha, the smiling Buddha, the laughing Buddha that we see. All right? But actually, in the history, he went to the forest. So on hearing that Buddha has passed away, Mahasanga actually rushed back, you know, for seven days, they were trying to um, cremate Buddha's body. Not a single light came out. And when Mahakasapa reached the 
the river where Buddha's body was set up. Then the fire started to ignite. And upon seeing that, you know, Buddha passed away, the monks start crying. There was one monk, I can't remember his name, all right, who started telling all the friends, why do we need to cry? Why do we need to feel so sad? Now that the old man has already passed away, he was so strict to us, he was so controlling, now we don't have him anymore, we can do whatever we want, we can, when we want it, and you know how we want it. Mahagasapa, on hearing that, was so worried. All right. He organized 499 arahan plus one ananda to compile the Buddha's teaching. That is the first rehearsal. All right. So, upon compilation too, Ananda also mentioned out. Our Lord also have a statement that some of the smaller code of practice could be changed. Then, then a lot of suggestion. There are two hundred and twenty-seven code of conduct for the Vinaya for the monk. All right, four are called parashik. If you kill, if you have sexual intercourse, if you steal, if you profess that you have supernatural ability, you are expelled straight away. All right. Some say, oh, we do away with parachik, we keep the rest. Some say, oh, we keep the rest. No, 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 no. We have no nothing. Everything else become, you know, uh, uh, just simple and you know, hmm, a state and forgive. Mahakasapa, on hearing that, give. Okay. Five minutes. Mahakasapa, on hearing that, he spoke to all the monks at the assembly. He said that if we change any of the Lord's teaching, people will say that the Buddha's teaching lasts only as long as the smoke of his cremation. Mahakasapa proposed that they keep everything in totality, then ask the assembly, if anyone have objection, raise your voice now. This part I add to myself, huh? or keep your silence. Then all of the monks chant in unison to keep all the precept. That is how the Trapidaka come about. So, I think I have to end here. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, what I have spoken today must have been inadequate in many and every way. I beg your forgiveness. So, I wish all of us to be the aware, the awake, and be delightful for all times. Thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, uh, wait, you got to wait.